Hey everybody, it's Tiffany from Quilters Workshop and today I'm finally going to be doing a quilting-ish video for you. Um, today is not a tutorial, but I did a video a little while ago on um, what I was working on sort of thing and just I don't know I just kind of think that it's interesting to look at what people are working on get a little bit of inspiration or like motivation to finish a project that you're working on at the moment um, and I'm working on a larger quilt today so it's taking me a little while I haven't to be honest I haven't been super motivated to work on it actually I haven't been super motivated to sew very much this year um, yeah it's been a rough one Anyway, so I'm going to show you what I've been working on. It's called A Storm at Sea, um, and I've been working on it with um, a special ruler um, that I'm going to talk about for a little bit. Uh, hopefully the sun is not too distracting. Um, sorry that the past couple of videos I've been posting haven't been um, like sewing or quilting related, um, but that's okay. Like you know what, at the end of the day, I'm just a 25 year old girl and I just want to post all kinds of things that I'm interested in because some of you might be interested in them too. And sorry that the background looks like a mess, but I don't think you have a real craft room unless everything is a disaster. Am I right? Anyway, so let's take a look at this ruler. Okay. So the ruler that I'm using looks like this and it is by the brand Creative Grids, the original non-slip ruler, Storm at Sea. Um, so it makes a 16 and a half inch block. Um, and the little booklet that comes with the ruler has the instructions on how to cut your material um, and how to use the lines on the ruler to do it. Um, so there is a particular quilt that I saw prior to purchasing this ruler that I'm using for inspiration. And I'll show you that now. Okay, so this is the the quilt here that I'm trying to sort of recreate. Um, I took this picture at um, Picton Fabric World. It's a quilt store in Picton, Ontario. Um, and don't worry, I had permission to take a picture of it and everything. Um, so I'm sort of using it as inspiration, but I'm not entirely doing the same thing. So I don't want to do the little sailboat there. And I also don't want to do the borders the way that they are. But I do really like the idea of the lighthouse um, with the little mariner star up in the corner. I think that's really cute. And I love that the stripes on the lighthouse um, are made the same way. Um, so obviously, I'm making up that portion myself. So my pattern currently consists of a whole bunch of scrap paper and like some sticky notes with <laughs> a few things written on and everything. Um, but for the ruler itself, I really like it. I think it's pretty foolproof. Um, I've never made a Storm at Sea quilt prior to this, so I can't exactly tell you that this is way easier than someone else's pattern, maybe. I'm sure there's plenty of other books or magazines that have Storm at Sea patterns in them, but I can promise you that using these um, to cut your triangle bits are going to be way easier than um, doing any template cutting for sure. Um, and like I said earlier, the instructions are all super clear. Um, so this is what the block actually looks like. Cause I know sometimes like when you look at a storm at sea like that, you can't really tell, um, where the blocks start and end and all that kind of thing. So like these, um, triangles here on the ruler, um, allow you to cut these dark red diamonds right here. If you see those, and then, um, these triangles over here are what you're going to use for um, the background pieces of those diamonds there to make that whole unit. So you make the center, um, like the square and the square in a square um, block uh, just by rotary cutting and the same with the corner pieces as well. And then um, the ruler really only helps you with these diamond units, um, but it's the colors that you choose um, that really make it sort of look like waves, I guess. So um, let's take a look at what I've got so far. Um, so basically how I'm going to do it is I've got 15 rows. Um, so obviously some of the rows are the skinnier pieces that are just the diamond units. And then some of the rows are like the full size. Um, so 
I've got rows one, two, and three done and together. And those are right here. This is rows one, two, and three. And then row four, I do have finished, and this is it lying here, but I don't have the Mariner Star paper piece yet. So it essentially goes right here. It's the second large block in in the row. And then once I do have it on and sewn, then I can join the rest of that row together. And then over here, I have rows five through nine entirely sewn together. So I'm actually going to open this up and show you what that looks like. There we go. So um, yeah, this is one of the largest portions that I have together so far. Um, I hope you guys like the colors that I chose. Um, I think it's nice. So the lighter fabric is actually like a cloud material. I'll give you like a closer look here. Um, and then the navy one I thought looked sort of wavy because the swirls um, and then I liked the the medium fabric that I chose I liked a lot because to me it sort of looks like maybe um, like foaminess of the water or like um, little reflections of the sun like kind of like twinkling through I don't know <laughs> I try to be artistic so hopefully that from a distance like when this is all together it will give that like kaleidoscope effect of like the waves and the the trick of your eye making it seem like a curve like you can kind of see this like darkness right here kind of coming up and down which is really neat um so anyway the reason why these rows aren't together yet this is row 10 through 15 and that is because i'm in the process of assembling my lighthouse which is going to go right here so as you can see i've got the two smaller pieces done i need to make the top of it where like um, the black bit and the actual light of the lighthouses. I don't know what that's called in real life. And then the two larger sections of it um, with the rest of the white and the red stripes continuing that pattern. And then the very last row, I've used this material that has little stones on it um, because the quilt that I'm getting my inspiration from um, just used like a, a gray textured type of material, but I thought it would be kind of fun to use the print with the rocks. So so that, my friends, is what I've been working on lately, in case anyone was wondering. Um, if you have any questions about it um, or anything like that, um, you can always send me an email at quilters.workshop at gmail.com. And if you want to keep a little more up to date on smaller things that I'm working on or the progress that I'm making on this quilt, if any, ooh, um, you can check out my Instagram and other social media, which are always listed in the down bar. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have a fabulous day. Bye.